In today's video, we are diving into the gutless method. I'm gonna tell you the pros, I'm gonna tell you the cons, and then I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it step by step. Let's get after it. My name is Matt and I live for moments like these. Guys, I killed the biggest buck of my life this morning. I'm far from an expert, but using persistence and a little bit of luck, I'm able to make some pretty cool things happen. I do my best to capture the entire harvest, the kill, the prep, and my favorite part, the meal. Because to me, it's more than a hunt. It's man versus deer. He is a mass monster, holy cow. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out a man versus deer video. I like to post hunting content specifically. I like to post catch, clean, cook style hunting content. So if you like that, you're in the right place. Make sure you smack that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on that notifications bell. Today's video actually takes place in a late season muzzleloader hunt. I went out to fill one more deer tag, put myself in the right place on the right morning, and was able to successfully harvest a really nice big doe. I was very, very far back in the timber on this particular morning. It would have been a real bear to drag that deer out and almost impossible to get a deer cart back there. So it was the perfect morning to try out the gutless method. And I gotta say, I was not disappointed. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did the gutless method. Step by step, we're gonna talk about the pros, we're gonna talk about the cons, and if at any point you get uh, curious about the specific gear that I used, whether it's the pack I used to haul it out, or the knives I used to cut it up, all of that stuff is going to be linked in the description. If you click on the link, it'll take you right to a place to purchase that on Amazon, and I do get a little bit of a kickback if you guys make a purchase on one of those links, definitely helps me out. With that being said, we're going to jump right into this video. Let me show you how to do the gutless method. All right, guys, to start this process, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a really sharp knife. I chose to go with the Outdoor Edge Razor Light. You're going to need some meat bags, which I just purchased off of Amazon. And you're going to need some type of frame pack to haul this thing out. I used an Everly Sock F1 pack. All those things are visible via links I have in my description. So to start this process, the first thing you're going to do is make an incision by the groin of the animal. You're going to follow that incision up the leg, working the hide up and over. You're going to disconnect the hide around where the tarsal gland is and then continue to work it over the back side of the animal. You're going to follow the incision all the way up the stomach and you're going to stop when you get to that front shoulder. From there, you're going to repeat the same process you did on the back of the leg. You're going to make an incision, follow it up, and remove the hide up and around the leg disconnecting it at that knuckle. You wanna make sure when you're cutting up, you don't open the gut cavity. This is called the gutless method and all the guts actually stay inside the animal. Uh, this is gonna expose the front shoulder. I'm gonna work back and keep working that hide over the back side of the animal to expose the back strap. Once I do that, I'm gonna hop around to the front, continue that incision of the neck, and it's going to expose all of that good neck meat that I wanna harvest. From there, I'm ready to start removing meat from the animal. I'm gonna start with that front shoulder. I'm gonna pop the bottom part of the leg off at the joint. I'm gonna move the joint back and forth, work the knife into the crevices, and you can actually do this without using a saw. When I remove that shoulder, it is the shoulder that took the impact of the bullet. I took some time to clean it off. One of the benefits of doing this method, you can kind of take your time and clean stuff there. And anything you clean stays in the woods. From there, we got a clean shoulder. It's going to go into the meat bag. I'm going to hop to the back side of the animal. I'm going to remove the bottom part of that leg in the exact same way. It took me a little bit longer, but again, no salt was necessary. All I had to do was work the knife into the crevices and that eventually came loose. Then I'm going to remove the ham at the ball joint. It's going to go into its own bag and that is two quarters removed from this animal. From there, I'm gonna hop around to the back side and start removing that back strap. I spend a lot of time here. I do remove that little flap of fat and silver skin that kind of covers it preemptively. And then I'm just gonna very slowly and carefully fillet that nice loin off the end. 
After that, the only thing left for me to grab on this animal on this side is the neck meat. So the back strap goes in the bag and I get to work on taking off that nice neck meat. Once that's done, I'm ready to flip this animal over and repeat that exact same process on the other side. I did remove the inner loins by making an incision and basically just reaching in and grabbing them. I did forget to film and I apologize, but that is part of this method as well. All in all, it only took me about 35 minutes from start to finish to completely break this animal down. As far as removing this animal for the woods, this is probably the most energy efficient way to do so. You're not dragging around the dead weight of the whole animal or messing around with a deer cart. You're literally only taking the parts of the animal that you're gonna eat and leaving the rest behind. So for that reason, it is probably the most time effective and energy effective way to get this done. Now, with that being said, that's a lot of good. Here is some bad. Uh, here's the cons to this method. One, you're going to leave a carcass in the woods. It's going to attract predators. If you do this in an area that you like to hunt, it could affect the hunting in that area, so be smart about that. Secondly, if you're on private land, a lot of landowners might get pissed off about this. You want to make sure you're not leaving carcasses out in the open where people are going to see them or smell them. And ultimately, you probably just want to have landowner permission. The last thing you want to do is lose permission on a really good chunk of hunting land because you didn't clear something with the landowner. Finally, if you do this sort of thing on public land, you want to make sure you check the regs. Each state is different. Each area is different. Make sure that you're not breaking the law. All in all, I found this to be very, very time efficient, energy efficient, and I will definitely be utilizing this method moving forward in any way, in any place that I can. The only thing I had left to do after breaking the animal down was secure all the meat onto the frame pack and haul it out of the woods. I did this by putting my bigger pieces down first to block any holes that the other meat might fall through, then put the shoulders down, and then lastly I put my loose meat. After that I just used the three different cinch straps that come on this frame pack to tighten everything down, and it was very, very solid. Didn't have anything fall out during the pack out. Very, very good experience. Well guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. I hope that this video was informative. I hope that you were able to take something away from it. And more than anything, I hope that it was entertaining enough that it makes you want to watch more men versus deer videos. If you guys want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you smack that notifications bell. And if you guys want to see the video where I harvest this animal, uh, as this video closes, there's going to be two suggested videos that pop up. One of those videos is going to have a title called Hunting Down Some Late Season Steak. It's a late season muzzleloader doe hunt, and that's the video where I harvested this animal. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out a man versus deer video. Thanks, and good luck in the woods.